Working memory is that capacity we all have to hold information in mind for brief periods of time. And uh, it's rather like providing a sort of mental jotting pad or, or workspace that we can hold in mind information that we need. And uh, it turns out this capacity is actually crucial to many, many aspects of our everyday life. Imagine the case where we're driving in an unfamiliar area and uh, looking for a particular location which we can't find. So we pull down the window and ask a passerby and say, how do we get to this place? Yeah. Um, they give you the usual instructions. They say you turn first right, second left by the church, it's down on the end and you can't miss it. I've forgotten already. You've forgotten already. So that, that captures really well that, that, that feeling of using working memory, that experience of holding it in mind while you're doing something else to guide your ongoing actions. It turns out that this is incredibly important for us as adults, but as a child it's probably even more important um, to help them actually in many, many activities in the classroom. It may be three or four children in each class who are performing at that, those really rather low levels. Right. It's not that they're not bright children, they just have that particular memory problem. And so what we see is that these children fail in lots of structured activities in the classroom. And they fail not because they can't understand the right. tasks, so they don't have any intellectual problems. Their problem is simply that they can't hold enough information in mind to take them through the tasks. And the more the tasks involve storing information and doing something difficult and demanding, the greater that problem is. So one approach is very much to um, adjust the environment of the child to bring it into the child's own capacity. Reduce the loads that might be imposed on the child, ask them to remember less, to simplify what they have to remember. Um, where possible to encourage things like the use of memory aids, um, we have to be careful about how to target those and make sure that children really can use them. So we, we can change the environment and that, and that seems to work quite well. And, and then you can change the child as well? Well, that clearly is the holy grail. Yeah. And there have been some very exciting developments in the last few years in this particular field. And what's been found is that fairly intensive um, training, which involves practicing for the child at their own personal limits, on particular types of working memory activity. So working at what we call their working memory spans and trying to expand their spans. So the child, when they, when they perform at higher levels than they have done before, they're given lots of rewards and encouragements. They know they're battling to increase their performance. Um, this can be done in, in the um, context of computerized type games and activities. What we know is that that sort of practice over a prolonged period, um, maybe six weeks, can actually lead to very substantial improvements in the child's performance on other working memory tasks. Uh, the great news is that even after that training program has finished, uh, we've looked for up to six months, most of those gains still stand. So the child, at the end, even though they've, they've not had to continue the program, they're still performing much better on these memory tasks. And is that because they're using it all the time? part of their everyday well, demand. Well, we hope that's the case, mm -hmm. or it may just be that that training in itself is enough to actually set, set in train um, a propensity, um, an inclination to actually do these tasks differently in, in such a way that, that, that's permanent. Whenever they encounter working memory demands out there in the real world, they'll, they'll marshal those strategies and bring them to bear on the ongoing task.